Welcome to the July Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got one story and it's pretty big. This was a surprise video put up by Charles Hoskinson, the CEO of IOHK. And what he reveals is he talks about smart contracts, Cardano, stake pool operators, Wolfram, and how it's all gonna fit in this nice little box called an Oracle. And he also dropped a surprise about using a little known cryptocurrency called Chainlink. So we're gonna go over that, but plus we're also gonna take a look at what Cardano could potentially do for this bull run, looking at historical data. Now we're getting all that, but first let's give away some free money. So today, thankfully, our partners over at Unstoppable Domains are gonna give away $100 worth of USDC stablecoin. So all you have to do is win, is write your .crypto or .zill account or domain that you own in the comments below, and that'll qualify to win. Now, just do me a favor. Make sure you do this. Add your USDC address to it as you're going to be paid directly to your domain. If you don't already have a domain in a .crypto or .zill, just go grab a blockchain domain using the link in my description. It looks just like this. And to make it fair, Unstoppable Domain is actually going to randomly choose one winner from the comments. They're going to pay that winner, and I'll share a video showing that the payment was actually done via their Coinbase wallet partner in my next video. Hey, uh, that's their partner, not mine. So good luck winning that free $100 in USDC. Now let's jump into today's top story. So first up, this was just dropped a couple hours ago, and it's just one of those special pop-up videos that Charles ever likes to throw in every so often. He does a lot of live streams, but this one was actually pre-recorded. And it was to me, it was pretty big. Because there's a there's a thing about Cardano. First of all, Cardano, I think, is a sleeping giant. I think it's gonna be very big in the future, and it really hasn't been around that long. I mean, if you look at the, the very earliest pricing report, it was in October 2017, and the main net was only launched on July 29th, 2020. I mean, this year it was just launched the main net. So what could potentially happen in the next bull run? We'll just stick around, I'll tell you. But first we have to get into this. And this was a, like I said, it was a pretty great video and just went over a couple of key points. So it's about 15 minutes, but I'm gonna break it down into four sections that really encompass what is really going on here. So just take a listen to this very first part. He's gonna talk about the three partnerships that are coming and how this is going to affect the Cardano network. And today let's talk about three of them. So we have the SPOs, we have Singularity Net, and we have Wolfram. Okay, and these are all interconnected in a very subtle way. So first off, you have to have an access point for smart contracts to get Oracle information. And what's nice about the stake pool operators is they run infrastructure for a business. They preserve the state of the chain, they advance it. Uh, they're responsible for building uh, the blockchain of Cardano. And they're public figures are registered on chain. You know a lot about them, they're very reliable. So. This is a very natural set for us to start building out APIs and infrastructure so that your smart contracts can talk to data feeds that are hosted, aggregated, federated through the SPO population. So SPOs, that's us, stake pool operators for the Cardano network. If you don't know DNews, uh, this is, that is our stake pool ticker. We've actually started up our own stake pool. We're almost at 10 million ADA for delegations, which is pretty good. I mean, considering that we're going on the 10th day, almost 10 million, so not too bad. But just so you know, that if you're going to stake to DNews, you can only do so up to 63 million. This is another stake pool called ADLT. This is the ADA Lite wallet. Once you get past 63 million you start to lose your reward so everybody who has staked to this uh, stake pool and a host of others uh, they're actually losing their rewards because you can only get up to 63 million now if you'd like to stake to d news just check out the link in the description it looks just like this and it'll take you to our stake pool information webpage. Just click on wallets right here, scroll all the way down, take a look at this video, and I'll show you exactly uh, who we are, what we're all about, and what the kind of rewards you can expect staking with D News at Digital Asset News. So yeah, Cardano and Charles Hawks and the whole team, they're really big on smart contracts, really want to get in DeFi. So there's really three things that they're looking for. Of course, solid stake pool operators, AGI and Wolfram. And one of those is about collecting data and one is about one is about computing data. Actually, let me back up. Let me have him explain to you what and how big these are as far as Wolfram and AGI. It's a cool things uh, with this setup. And I think the SPOs are a very natural set. You also need to operate 
on that data. And you need a source, okay? The power and magic of Singularity Net and the power of magic of AI is that you can do all kinds of really, really cool things with that platform, with the agents of that platform uh, that will enable you to verify uh, veracity and uh, mine uh, interesting statistics and so forth. And Wolfram has a language named Wolfram and one of the largest sets of data in the world to operate on, okay? Uh, and they have deals with Siri, they have deals with Alexa, they have deals uh, all across the entire space. I think they work with Google. There's not a single Fortune 500 that doesn't talk to the Wolfram platform. And they have this amazing programming language which allows you to compute on the data. So these are the things that I like to hear. I like to hear about companies who are reaching out and making strategic partnerships to improve the business as a whole. And when I think about Cardano, I mean, in the beginning, you just think about a cryptocurrency and things that can be done. Okay. Then you start to think about, okay, that they're going to actually be able to build things on Cardano, actually do, do a lot of stuff as far as like smart contracts and DeFi and all those great things. But then you start to think about, well, who are they targeting? Who are they trying to get into? Because, I mean, we all know where, where Bitcoin's going. It's all happening with the institutions and people want to do like stores of value and, and just hold and, and everything else. But what is Cardano doing? Who are they going for? Who is their market niche? And I didn't really figure it out until I actually watched this video. It was a fireside chat. It was between Charles Hoskinson and the CEO of the Cardano Foundation, which is Frederick Grigard. Frederick here is an ex-employee for PricewaterhouseCoopers. Very smart guy. He's been entrenched in the Fortune 500 companies. And I was like, why do they hire this guy? And now I understand and now I get it. And I will link this fireside chat in the description. What Cardano was doing is they are directly and actively going for to these Fortune 500 companies because they know that they're that the things they're trying to do can be greatly accelerated through the blockchain, through Cardano, and what they can bring to them. So there's already closed loops or you know centralized types of blockchain, such as IBM that are working with the 500 companies and they're trying to do their own little magic, but. I do believe it's not going to work as vastly as superior as it could here as far as Cardano. Now, I uh, full disclosure, obviously, I do own ADA. I do own Cardano. So I'm going to be a little bit biased. But I've never seen very large corporations and entities be very nimble and try to really get into uh, these big companies or even small companies because they can't really pivot and move like a smaller company can. And that's where I think the power of Cardano comes in. And they're actually building a great team around them because all businesses really comes down to this. It doesn't matter how great your product is. It really comes down to the team that you assemble around you and how you get your message out as far as marketing. Bitcoin did a fantastic job, but it had a lot of great people around it, which allowed it to flourish. So when I start to start to see Cardano, IOHK, Amergo, the Cardano Foundation themselves, and they're trying to like give these really great uh, people together as far as a team, I think this is going to do very well. And these are the types of things that I look for. So now that we know all about these 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 three parts, the SPO, AGI, and Wolfram, right? Wolfram is huge. You've seen it everywhere. And just like what Charles talked about, it's integrated into some of the biggest companies in the, around the world. So now we're going to talk about the actual info as far as like how Chainlink and Oracles come into play. That doesn't have to be a central database. That could be the SPOs. That could be a trusted server. That can be a federation of actors. That can be Chainlink. There are many different sources. So this is kind of the first stage in the great Oracle pipeline is determining a source. And then you basically from that will have an opinion about the veracity of the information, how true it is, how reliable it is. You'll have an opinion about, is this going to be available 24 seven when I need it, where I need it? Also, is there everything there or do I have to stitch it together? Okay. The access control, there's a very natural regulating mechanism for that the SPOs, and then you need bespoke capabilities to compute on that data so you can get it into a format, that data, uh, into a format your smart contracts can understand and operate on and be able to uh, find useful. So what does this all mean? Where is this all going? What is the great reveal? I'll let Charles just talk about it right now. And it's all about choices and partnerships. Is we're building capabilities and partnerships. Uh, so we're going to build 
some infrastructure for the SPOs. And basically, this is the Oracle access layer. Okay. And that will make it very easy for the SPOs to provide interfaces for smart contracts to operate on. We'll make sure that that Oracle access layer is able to take queries that are written with AGI, uh, so Singularity Net, and take queries that are written with the Wolfram programming language. And if you are querying from Wolfram, and then using this on the other side, it can plug into different data sources. The very first data source is going to be the Wolfram data source because that's enormously complete. Uh, you, for example, can ask questions like, how many shipwrecks have happened uh, around the coast of Florida from 1950 to 2000 uh, that lost more than $100 million worth of cargo in the months of August to September? And draw a map of it showing the frequency by uh, a picture. And it actually be able to return a query. It's absolutely extraordinary what Wolfram has. But then we believe in choice, so you should be able to use other sources as well with this generic framework. So, so anyway. when people talk about Cardano and they say it is a third generation blockchain, I'm starting to understand exactly how big this could potentially be. If you think about any project that's out there right now, how many of those projects could Cardano squeeze into, fit into, and become that project and maybe do it as good, if not maybe a little bit better? There's a lot of things it can do, and there's a lot of, they're very meticulous in what they're trying to do, and they're really trying to be a huge entity. Now, can they do it? That is the big question. But I think just as far as a speculator, as an outsider looking in who may not know a ton of things about cryptocurrency, uh, I would probably want to invest into this project. And that gets me to my next point. Cardano currently is number eight on the top 100 of all cryptocurrency digital assets out there. Chainlink is sitting in at around a solid seven. Actually, they're pretty close, both of them. But do you see how they can, of course, what you talked about as far as working together. But if I'm an investor, I'm trying to look at, okay, who is building a lot of partnerships? Who has a great team behind it? Who has the funding? Who has some type of vision about where they want to go and what they want to do? Well, in a lot of these top 50, we'll say, there's a good amount. But if I'm going to take a look at something like, hmm, who here has already done something like that? Well, Charles was part of the Ethereum Mafia, one of the ones that actually brought Ethereum to, to actually fruition and uh, made it a viable product. Now, there's a lot of people that was involved in that, but Charles was one of those people. Him, Vitalik, Gavin Wood. And what did Dr. Wood do? Oh yeah, he made Polkadot right here in number nine. So do you see how things are kind of coming all together? So let me backtrack right here. You know why I'm so engrossed with the teams and talking about where people have actually come from? This little thing called Ethereum Mafia, uh, I actually created this because I stole it straight from the PayPal Mafia. I found this nice little image, nice little graphic. And I pretty much just uh, made it into my own for the Ethereum Mafia. But the thing that really stands out with the PayPal Mafia and the whole thing of how it was was, uh, was put together is because these guys right here, uh, maybe you've heard of some of these companies, YouTube and Yelp and LinkedIn and Tesla and Square and Sequoia Block Factory and, and Peter Thiel and all the things that he's done. Do you see all these people, how they all started off in one central core type of business. It became a multi-billion dollar, you know, darling. And they kind of just branched off and did another great multi-billion dollar company. It's because success breeds success. I'm sorry to say it, but that is exactly the truth. So when I started to talk about, you know, different people who come from the Ethereum mafia, I bet on these people because they've already done something great. And I think they can actually do it again, just like the PayPal mafia did. Now, and also on top of that, you see this guy right here named Steve Chen. Well, this is the reason why I'm so big on Theta because he is part of this Theta token. Also on top of that, you see this guy named Peter Thiel, multi-billionaire. This is why I talk a lot about layer one and what they're doing with Bitcoin mining. Again, teams and people you put around you will make or break you as a company. And that's why I believe in these types of people. So as an investor, I have some questions. And the questions are, well, what was its all-time high? Where, where is it now? What is the market cap? 
what is the circulating supply and what is the max supply? So first of all, I just want to take a quick look at, you know, first of all, when, when did this all start? Well, like I said, it didn't start until October 2017. Okay, that was when the first, very first price could be found. It was two cents. And then in October 2017, all the way to that huge run-up, we hit a high of around $1.18. That's pretty good amount, right? But that was nothing. They didn't even have a main net. The main net didn't come until four months ago. So back then, when there was nothing, it hit $1.18. So how much could it hit at this point? Well, let's take a look at the actual circling supply and max supply. So the max supply, and here's one of the, one of the downfalls, potentially. 45 billion. That's a lot. That's a lot. But I think for what they're trying to do, they need a lot of ADA or ADA. You've got 31 million, which is circulating right now. The rest of it is pretty much locked up and it's uh, there for developers and whatnot. So sure, we have that, that data. And the market cap itself right now is only 5 billion. But the trading volume right now is a billion. So you're looking at 20% is the trading volume to the market cap. So it's pretty liquid so far, not too low. But the question again is, what could the price potentially be? And the thing that I want to look at first is this. I'm going to take a look at the market cap calculator. The circulating supply is around 31 billion, 112 million, somewhere around there. I just copied and pasted it. So, that, so that's what it was. And right now, the value is it's around 16 cents. So of course, looking at a, at a market cap of around almost 5 billion, just like what it said. Great, got it. So if we took a look at the all-time high, which is a dollar 18, you're looking only at a market cap of 36 billion, which is really not too much for a top 10 cryptocurrency. Again, it just depends on the actual project itself. Right now, uh, Bitcoin is sitting at around 423 billion. So that's something to consider. 423 billion, that's quite a bit, but really it's not. Cardano is not just here to be a store of value to sit around and collect dust. Cardano is meant to be built upon. It's, it's meant to be used for decentralized finance. It's meant to be used for a whole host of things for very enormous companies around the entire globe. So I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say, well, what if we could say that if Bitcoin goes from around 20,000, which is right now, to what I believe it's going to hit in 2021, which is 150,000, you're looking at a 7x. So 7x on top of its all-time high, which is 20,000. If we just take 7x just for what Cardano was, we'll just take round numbers. Let's just say it's a dollar, it goes up 7x, let's just say $7. Make it super simple. A market cap of $217 billion. Well, let's not even say that. Actually, let's just go 5x because I think that, you know, on the low end, I think Bitcoin could do up to 100,000, which will only be 5x. So five, a dollar, sure, 5x, $5. So if we do that, we've only got a market cap of $155 billion. I think for what we're trying to do and what it can actually accomplish, I do not see how this can't hit around $5 at a $155 billion market cap, especially since I believe it will be listed on Coinbase relatively soon. And let's not forget, Coinbase Custody is going to support secure Cardano staking this year. This was on July 3rd, 2020. So how much do you think the price could go up just on the news of a Coinbase listing? How much do you think the price could go up just on news if it went over to PayPal? Imagine taking a look at PayPal. You have the options of Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. And every single one of them is up almost at, well, Litecoin's almost at $100 now already. And then you have this little low cap gem and it's at about a dollar or 16 cents. You're like, hmm, I don't know what that is, but I can see myself getting into that because that could be the next Bitcoin because they have no idea what it is. The thing is, is that on the low end, I can see $5 again for the Coinbase listing. If it gets listed anywhere else, something big like PayPal, expect it to go double, even triple that. And I think that not only is Cardano a sleeping giant, but also Chainlink, especially with what they're trying to do. We will see how it all plays out, but it all depends on listings and partnerships and what they can actually do. All right, so that's it for today's video. Thanks for sticking with me to the very end. I appreciate it. Remember, if you want to win the $100 USDC, all you have to do is one of two things. First, put your domain, the .crypto or .zil, in the comments below. Also, add in your USDC public address, not your private address, public. If someone wants to send you some USDC, go let them go right ahead. That's all. That's uh, no problem. All right. So thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it, and uh, I will see you next week.